Business Book Summaries. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to a book titled The Challenger Sale by Matthew Dixon and Brent Adams. This book, published in 2011 and spanning 240 pages, delves into the art of effective customer conversations in the context of sales. The authors conducted an extensive study involving thousands of sales representatives across various industries and locations. Their findings challenge the conventional notion of building relationships as the key to successful sales, especially in the realm of complex and large-scale business to business solutions. The study identified five distinct profiles that sales reps typically fall into. Among these, the challenger emerged as the standout performer. Unlike the traditional focus on relationship building, the challenger approach emphasizes managing conversations assertively and skillfully, both with customers and within their own teams. In the past, it was widely believed that strong relationships were the foundation of successful sales, particularly in complex deals. However, the rise of the internet has transformed purchasing behaviors, leading to a shift in this paradigm. Customers now place less emphasis on relationships and more on value creation and innovative thinking from salespeople. The authors argue that successful selling is no longer solely about relationships, but rather about bringing new ideas and insights to customers. This philosophy is central to the challenger approach, which prioritizes helping customers think differently and providing them with valuable perspectives. Challenger reps possess six distinct attributes that set them apart. One, they offer unique and thought-provoking viewpoints. Two, they excel in two-way communication skills. Three, they understand the individual value drivers of each customer. Four, they can identify the economic factors driving the customer's business. Five, they are comfortable discussing financial aspects. Six, they can guide customers toward making decisions. In the book, the authors classify salespeople into five types. One, the hard worker, 21% these individuals are dedicated and persistent, always going the extra mile and seeking feedback and growth. Two, the challenger, 27% challengers have a different perspective on the world, understand their customers' businesses deeply, enjoy constructive debates, and push customers to think critically. Three, the relationship builder, 21% this group focuses on building strong relationships and advocates within customer organizations, being generous with their time and getting along well with everyone. Four, the lone wolf, 18% lone wolves work independently, are often self-assured and are less likely to collaborate with their colleagues. Five, the reactive problem solver, 13% these reps are responsive to customer needs, adept at resolving issues, and tend to avoid making waves. Imagine a lone wolf. It's a bit like someone who follows their own instincts. They're confident and sometimes a bit hard to control. Now, let's talk about the fifth type of salesperson, the reactive problem solver. This person, about 14% of the group, is good at responding to different people's needs and solving problems in a very detailed way. When we talk about a challenger, we're talking about someone who's really good at three things, teaching, adapting to specific situations, and taking control of conversations. Challengers are focused on getting customers to think in new and different ways, which can be a bit uncomfortable for the customer. On the other hand, the relationship builder is more interested in being liked and accepted by customers. Challengers succeed by keeping a bit of tension in the sales process. This is a good kind of tension that pushes the customer to think harder and consider new ideas. Relationship builders, though, want to avoid tension and keep things smooth. Challengers bring new ideas that change the way customers see their own businesses. They talk to customers in ways that relate to their specific needs. They use the tension in conversations to their advantage, which helps move the sale forward. For example, a challenger won't just give in to a customer's request for a discount. Instead, they'll focus on the overall value of the solution. Challengers also challenge how customers think and make decisions. This can help customers make decisions faster and overcome any doubts they might have. 
To be a good challenger, you need to figure out what problems matter the most to your customers and show them how your solution can solve those problems. Remember, it's not just what you're selling that matters, it's how you sell it. Building customer loyalty happens during those sales conversations. Loyalty doesn't come from ads or fancy features. It's about the way salespeople connect with customers. There are five important things customers value in a salesperson. One, unique ideas. Customers want salespeople who can give them new and valuable ways of looking at the market. Two, help with choices. Good salespeople help customers understand their options. Three, ongoing advice. Customers like it when salespeople continue to provide helpful advice even after the sale. Four, avoiding mistakes. Salespeople who help customers avoid problems are appreciated. Five, teaching about new things. Educating customers about new issues and possibilities is important. Customers are saying, don't waste my time. Challenge me and teach me something valuable. Offering insightful ideas that make customers rethink their perspectives is incredibly valuable. Remember, loyalty is built in the real conversations salespeople have with customers every day. Over half of customer loyalty is based on your ability to perform better than your competition. It's not just about the product or the ads. It's about how you handle those important sales interactions. When it comes to making sales, more than half of customer loyalty is based on how you sell, not just what you're selling. While having great products, a strong brand, and good service is important, all of that can go to waste if your salespeople can't effectively show their expertise in the field. Customers also care a lot about having a smooth and easy buying experience. Nobody wants to work with a company that makes buying things more complicated than it needs to be. When customers are looking for solutions, they don't want to struggle to spend their money. Instead, what really sets the best companies apart is not just the quality of their products, but the fresh ideas they bring to the table. These ideas can help customers make money or save money in new and unexpected ways. It's not enough to just ask good questions. You need to provide insightful ideas that give your customers a good reason to choose you over anyone else. Let's break down how a sales pitch works using a simple six-step process. One, warm up and empathy. Start by connecting with the customer's thoughts and showing that you understand their perspective. Two, reframe the problem. Present a new way of looking at an issue the customer might not have recognized before. Three, build rationale. Gradually intensify the problem you've introduced, making it clear why it's important to address. Four, break down the problem, show the emotional impact of the problem and how it affects individuals, then lead into your solution. Five, value proposition. Present your solution as a new approach tied to your value as a supplier. Six, solution and implementation. Detail your solution and show how it ties back to the key teaching points. Remember, it's crucial to engage both the logical and emotional sides of your customer's thinking. If you can't do this effectively, they might decide to do nothing rather than making a choice. Changing established ways of doing things requires both intuition and logic. If you're going to present a new way of thinking, do it boldly. This is the moment to grab your customer's attention and spark their curiosity. When discussing a customer's business, Focus on ways that can boost their productivity. The best sales conversations tell a story about the customer's business, teach them something new, and then guide them to understand what makes them unique. Don't start by just giving information, lead them to discover it. Remember, the real value in these interactions isn't just the products themselves, but the fresh perspectives you bring. In the world of sales, it's about how well you understand your customer's needs and provide insights that make their businesses better. Solution selling means customizing your approach in the moment. Your main goal as a salesperson is to guide the conversation, moving from uncovering needs to nurturing a productive discussion. And when you're presenting your ideas, make sure they're big and impactful to stand out in your customer's mind. Let's break down these points in a simpler way. Creating big ideas. One. Innovation, your idea must be new and different, even if it's not yet tested. Two, 
Risk big ideas often mean asking companies and customers to take a chance on something new. 3. Challenge. The idea itself should be hard to execute due to its scale, uncertainty, or complex nature. This way, customers will seek your help to make it work. Managing tension, relationship builders try to ease tension, while challengers use tension to their advantage. Challengers focus on understanding the customer's business, not just talking about their solution. Value of insight, the biggest opportunity for growth, doesn't come from what you sell, but from the insights you offer during the sales process. Customer loyalty, customers are looking for professionalism in salespeople. They want someone they can trust. Indirect influence, to sell more. Don't just target the decision maker directly. Sometimes, it's more effective to influence others who can support your solution within the organization. Challenger approach. Challenger reps don't just focus on their product. They focus on helping the customer achieve their goals. They're confident in discussing value and money. Creating momentum, challengers keep deals moving forward. They don't let them get stuck like other types of reps do. This is because they're always thinking ahead to the next step. Taking control, challengers take the lead in conversations. Customers see them as confident partners, not salespeople trying too hard. Value Vs. Objections, sales professionals, sometimes underestimate their value and overestimate customer objections. They undervalue the resources their company offers. Constructive tension, taking control involves creating a healthy tension in conversations. Challengers challenge the customer's perspective and provide new ways of thinking. Successful negotiation. One, acknowledgement. Start by recognizing the other side's point of view. Two, deepen and broaden. Dive deeper into the discussion and expand the conversation to reach a positive outcome. Remember, the key is to offer fresh ideas, create a positive tension, and guide the conversation confidently. This is what sets successful salespeople apart. Let's simplify these points for easier understanding. Addressing concerns, when talking about pricing, salespeople often say something like this, I know we need to discuss the price, but first, let's make sure I understand your needs well. This way, we can make this deal as valuable as possible for you. Is that okay? What are your goals with a 20% reduction? Frontline sales managers in any sales team the frontline manager is crucial. They connect the big plan to what actually happens. For changes and improvements in sales to work, they need to happen here. Managerial skills, being a great salesperson doesn't automatically make you a great manager. Managing a team well needs a different set of skills. Like in the army, no matter how much you plan, real situations are different. Commander's intent, in the army, Leaders use a simple idea called commander's intent. It's a clear statement of what the leader wants to achieve. This helps in situations where things don't go exactly as planned. Sales innovation. One of the most important things for top-notch sales managers is being innovative. It means finding new ways to do things and being open to change. Coaching and training. Coaching is more than just training. Training is about giving information while coaching is about putting that information into practice. It's like personalized advice that helps people when they need it most. Effective coaching matters. Good coaching is important. It helps everyone from struggling salespeople to the best ones. If coaching isn't effective, people feel like giving up. Key principles of sales. Remember these three important things. Teaching the customer, tailoring your approach to their needs, and taking control of the conversation. Wrapping up, that's all for today's video about the Challenger Sale by Matthew Dixon and Brent Adams. You can follow us on social media. If you enjoyed this video, consider buying the book from the link in the description. If you have any feedback or want us to summarize another book, let us know. Thanks for watching and have a great day.